Hey everyone, Money G here. Yes, it's time to do one of my thoughts on videos because the final X-Men movie from 20th Century Fox dropped this weekend. It's X-Men Dark Phoenix. Yes, <laughs> this is going to be the final X-Men movie from Fox because of the Disney merger as they bought out all of uh, Fox's movie studios, and that means the rights to the X-Men franchise will go right back over to Marvel Studios, so this is their last movie. Now, X-Men Dark Phoenix is a 2019 superhero movie. It was written and directed by Simon Kilberg. It stars James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, Nicholas Holt, Sophie Turner, Ty Sheridan, Andrew Ella <laughs> Alexander Shrip. Cody Smith McPhee, Evan Peters, and Jessica Ch Chastain. Yes, <laughs> mostly everyone from this new version of the X Men uh, are in this particular movie. Uh, I believe this is the 20th X Men movie in the Fox X Men movie franchise, and I believe this is the seventh movie uh, starring this particular cast. And it will, like I said before, the final X Men film uh, coming from Fox due to the Disney merger. And, uh, well. I'm pretty sure a lot of people know this film is getting a lot of hate. A lot of people did not like this particular picture, uh, including Jeremy Johns. He actually gave it his dog shit ranking. <laughs> but let's see what I thought about this final film from Fox of X-Men Dark Phoenix. Now, the premise is sort of similar to what how Phoenix got her powers in the comics uh, after a rescue mission in space goes wrong. Jean Grey begins to develop incredible powers that corrupt and turn her into Dark Phoenix. Now, the X-Men will have to decide if the life of a team member is worth more than the life of all the people living in the world. Yeah, it's a simple premise. Just <laughs> what can you say? Now, after Disney bought 20th Century Fox movie studios, he also got back the rights to the X-Men to Marvel Studios. So, with the X-Men now back from Marvel Studios, Fox had one more movie left in their X-Men franchise. I decided to go once again with one of the biggest stories in the comic book series, The Dark Phoenix Saga. Now, they did try this with The Last Stand, and we know how bad that movie was. And the people who read uh, The Dark Phoenix comic saga, including myself, believe that Simon Kingberg would try to correct that awful mistake and come up with an exciting and fitting in for Fox's Murray Mutants movies. <laughs> Unfortunately, what we have here is a flat, somewhat boring, and dull movie. Oh, boy. There were some good moments in the film. We have solid acting from James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, but the script doesn't have any punch to it. I mean, I wasn't expecting Endgame here, but I was expecting something that would at least be better than what The Last Stand gave us. Uh, and to be quite honest, see, we have something here that makes The Last Stand look like an awesome film. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Now, in the beginning of the film, we see eight-year-old Jean Grey inadvertently use her telekinesis that causes a car accident that kills her parents. Hmm, terrible. Now, after meeting a very young Charles Xavier, he convinces her to attend his school for gifted youngsters, and he's going to protect her. Now, in 1992, after the events of Apocalypse, the X-Men and the mutants are now heroes and are no longer feared by humans. <laughs> Yeah, he, even Charles got a direct line to the President of the United States. Now, when they tried to rescue astronauts from the space shuttle, Jean Grey is hit with something that looks like a solar flare, but survives. Wow! Uh, during a party at the mansion, Jean's mental powers have been increased tenfold, and she's afraid that she's going to hurt someone, including hurt Scott. So she leaves the mansion. I gotta get out of here. I'm gonna kill everybody. Uh, we see that Xavier has also been keeping secrets, and once those secrets have been discovered later on in the film by Jin, she lashes out even more, hurting members of her X-Men and uh, members of her X-Men and police officers as well. There's even some surprises in this particular film, but I will not spoil them here. So, can the X-Men stop Jean before she destroys all the goodwill they have built between humans and mutants? <laughs> we'll see. Now again, I was not expecting an in-game spectacle here, but I did, and I'm sure everyone else wanted the last X movie from Fox to be something special. I mean, as I stated earlier, we have a flat and sometimes boring movie. I mean, nothing really is engaging happens here. Uh, there are some continuity issues as well, since we all saw Phoenix use the Phoenix Forge from Apocalypse, so while all of a sudden she doesn't have it here, it doesn't make any sense. 
My guess is that Simon was trying to appease X-Men comic book fans who were trying to bring some elements from the source material because for people who don't read the comics, the same thing happened at the beginning of this movie also happens in the comics. There's a space mission. All of a sudden, Gene uh, tries to stop all the radiation from coming in. And all of a sudden, we see the Phoenix Force enter into Gene. So the same thing happens here. The same thing happens in the comics. Uh, now, at least this scene is filmed brilliantly and looks great, but it doesn't have the impact I believe it should have. So I think this spectacular should have some impact to it, but it's just nice to look at, but we really are not amazed by it. And that's been because the story that Simon has written here has no build to it. I mean, there's no real character developments in this movie. No one really has an arc. Sure, there are some secrets that Charles has hidden from Gene, and they play a part in Gene's emotions throughout the film, but no one else ha has any character arcs in the movie, just save for Gene and Charles. Uh, we have some nice banter between Charles and Raven, and some nice scenes between Hank and Raven, but that's basically all we get. Another problem I have with the film is how quickly Gene's progression is after her encounter with the solar flare. <laughs> One minute she's fine, she's partying, but we see she's kind of thirsty, and next she's tearing up the house. Tearing up the uh, the house. She's tearing up houses, uh, police cars, and X-Men members. Now, I know the Phoenix Force is one of the most powerful forces in the universe, but there's no way Gene should be such a master using it after just being exposed to it just one day. You should have some type of progression of her not ability to control it. Now, one of the huge problems in this film is the thankless role that Jessica Jastain has as the so-called villain Glux, some type of alien. Uh, this villain is so bland and so flat and uninteresting that nothing she says carries any weight to it. She's just there uh, with the blonde hair and this looks supposed to look menacing, but all she does look like she's just reading her lines. Her motivations mean nothing, and she will go down in history as the worst villain ever in a Marvel movie. Now, I'm talking about any Marvel movie whatsoever. It's a shame because Jessica is such a brilliant actress and deserves much more better than the piece of crap Simon and his writing team has done here. One of the few good things in this movie is Jane McAvoy's exit, once again, is Charles Xavier. I like this character art in the movie as he feels that his dreams of a peaceful coexistence between humans and mutants has finally come true. But he will do anything to keep that dream in reality, even that means sending his beloved X-Men on dangerous missions, such as a space mission. Uh, his relationship with Gene is the main focal point of the movie, and the scenes between him and Turner are what give the movie some brief moments of character development. There are very strong scenes between him and Turner, and I thought both actors did a great job. Uh, he cares deeply for Gene, even if some of the things he has done isn't morally correct. Uh, you can actually sense Patrick Stewart in some of these scenes where McAvoy shows Xavier's emotions, especially when he realizes the mistakes that he has made and he admits to them and it's like, you know, I really fucked up. Well, Michael Fassbender is excellent as Magneto once again. I like his character uh, and all throughout this series here, but I don't know what his true purpose is in the film. <laughs> yes, he has a great scene between he and uh, Sophie Turner, but it really serves no purpose other than to have him in the film or show and show him what Magneto has been up to since Apocalypse. The same goes for the rest of the characters in this film as well. This stare is simply there. Hey, it's an X-Men film. Let's bring everybody back from Apocalypse. Now, let's talk about Sophie Turner. Now, I haven't seen any episode of Game of Thrones, so I've only seen her in Apocalypse. Now, she was good in that, and she does what she can in this movie. Again, she has great scenes with Mac and Fassbender, and you can see her emotions as she's struggling to control the Phoenix Force as she tries to, I think, go between two personalities. We see uh, the Jean Grey character, but we also see her as Phoenix. We can see how she's trying to regulate the two and not try to do some of the things that she's, that she's doing. And it's a shame because uh, Simon Script doesn't do her any growth, uh, especially the scenes involving Chad Singh. They're just flat and uninteresting. Uh, now let's get to that third act, which I believe is the worst part of the movie. And while we do get some nice action scenes and some inventive ways involving Nightcrawler's teleportation, his fights, but this is basically a CGI going haywire. <laughs> Most of it looks similar to the last stand. For a minute, though, I thought Vacky Jensen was going to come and make an appearance. Uh, it's bland, it's dull, and it's quite lackluster, and it just doesn't have any type of weight whatsoever. I'd rather have seen the, uh, at least the last stand, the final act, had some weight into it. It had some 
some uh, sadness into it because we all know, you know, Wolverine didn't want to kill Jean, but he knew he had to. Now, I can see why the critics hate on this movie, and I, I get their points. It, uh, it's uninteresting. The uh, plot is, uh, is flat, it's dull, it's boring. Uh, most of the characters doesn't have any art. Yeah, we have some nice acting. I thought Nicholas Hope did a pretty good job as Beast because we, he does have some emotional uh, impact in the film with, uh, because of what happened to a certain character, which I will not reveal here. And uh, I thought all the actors did okay because they're pretty good. It's just that the script doesn't give them anything to do. There's nothing to build on here. That's the problem with this movie. At least The Last Stand had a story. Not a good one, but it had a story. Most of the characters had a character arc. Yeah, it was poorly done. It was poorly acted. I mean, whoever forget that line, I'm the juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> it, was, it was dumb. But at least it had something. It's here. It's like Fox said, hey, this is our last X-Men movie, so let's pick, let's try the Dark Phoenix story again. Let's try to not make the same mistakes that we did with the last end. But here, they made it worse. I don't know what Simon Kilberg and his writer team were doing, but they absolutely did not do their homework here at all. Now, obviously, if I were ranking the X-Men films up, this would definitely be the worst one out of the whole bunch. Yes, it's, it's worse than The Last Stand, in my opinion. And it's very disappointing, certainly probably not the way that you expected the X-Men. A uh, very highly popular group, uh, very popular during the 90s. Uh, it's one of my favorite comic book groups when I was reading comics, and I still love them today. But this film, it's kind of a bit insulting to, to me as far as uh, a comic book reader having read the Dark Phoenix Saga and what that story is as far as X-Men my mythos are concerned. It's close to what uh, Sam Raimi did with Spider-Man 3 and the insult he did with some of the Spider-Man mythos with Spider-Man 3. And this falls along the lines right here. Now, most of you guys know, uh, with these my thoughts on movies, I don't rank these uh, movies at all. I don't use my uh, gold coins, but if I were to rank this, I would give this one. <laughs> I'd give it a one out of five, because that's how bad this movie is. It's, it, it is highly disappointing, because I expected something much, much better. So, that's my video for the day, guys. Hope you did enjoy it, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, because it does help the channel out a lot. And once again, this is your first time here. Uh, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. That way you'll be notified anytime when I put up new videos, when I do my horror reviews, wrestling, you know, horror reviews, uh, wrestling predictions, uh, top five, top worst, or any other horror material, or these videos, you'll get the chance to see it. Well, hope you enjoyed it, everything. Once again, it's Lamont Smith here, and I hope to see you guys very well soon again. I'm out. Peace.